My aim for this session is really to give you a little bit of a toolkit, maybe a starter, some ideas that hopefully you can take back to your organization that can maybe make a difference, that can help you build your own moonshots. But what I wanted to start with was a real moonshot project. This is kind of a bit of a personal story to me. My first moonshot project, my first big piece of technology that changed my life, no one's laughing. Who here had a spectrum? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Half the audience, hand up, had a spectrum. OK, I'm amongst friends. OK, the spectrum to me was my first experience of a real technology moonshot. And it was my first computer. And I learned technology on it. And it was a huge breakthrough at the time. Clive Sinclair and Sinclair Research did some incredible things. They developed some incredible new technologies that are still with us today. Moonshots live in that kind of gray area between audacious technology and pure science fiction. And people, the human race in general, we love crazy outlandish plans. Some of the ideas are starting to happen. The idea of instead of just demanding information for the computer to suggest things, understand context and to be able to assist is with us right now. And we can do many of those things. Create an environment that celebrate, celebrates and thrives on ideas, rather than some of the environments that punish the new and punish ideas. So today, let's talk about that radical innovation, cultural ideas behind it. And please take away some of the ideas, not in the context of you putting a man on the moon, even though there may be someone here who can do that, but more mundanely think about how can that impact my business? How can I work with today's technology to change the way we're doing things? Look at the race to the moon. This had huge side effects. You know, there's many, many benefits to health. The oft-quoted things around digital navigation computers, you know, small-scale integrated circuits, then larger-scale integrated circuits. But if you look at more broadly things that have impacted us, there's some incredible things that came out of the Apollo program. Now, I'd probably get more hands up here if I asked who had a cordless drill at home. That technology came from the Apollo moon race. It was a critical thing that they needed. They needed tools that were powered because of the gloves. Other great examples, the watch on your wrist. General Time Corp developed that electrically stimulated crystal for keeping time that we all use today. So a moonshot's not just about the one thing you do. It's about the spin-offs. It's about the impact across your organization and across society. We hear a lot of talk of big, hairy, audacious goals. A BHAG is the, ter is, is the phrase that's used. More importantly, in, in the kind of world that we all live in, a moonshot is about clearly articulating what we're trying to do, thinking about the mission that we're on, or thinking about multiple missions that we're on that we're going like, to move on very, very quickly, and maybe we'll kill some of those things off. Also, moonshots require a different way of interacting. And one of the great things of working at Google, one of the things I enjoy most, is the attitude of the Googlers. And one of the things that, that we train people internally on is not to use the phrase, no but. Really simple trick to change the way people interact, to change the way they collaborate, to move from a combative, I'm going to knock you down kind of thing and penalize you, to one where teams come together and pull together genuinely. I mean, John F. Kennedy here, as we all know, launched the original moonshot in 1962 with the phrase, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and to do other, the other things, not because they're easy, but because they are hard. So OK, we've got a big goal. What do we do next? Somebody's come up with a big goal. Or maybe we've got 10 of them we, we, that we're looking at. The environment that people work in is critical. Google has a real reputation for very different offices. And we try to be playful and whimsical. And we try to do that, but people work incredibly hard in that environment. They really, really deliver, and they use those spaces. And it might be spaces to collaborate and work as teams, or to just reflect on your own quietly and do some work when you're trying to think. It might be great restaurants that people get up in the, uh, early in the morning to get into the office, where they sit and have meetings with their colleagues and they collaborate together. But you need to think about spaces to collaborate, spaces for teamwork, spaces for people to sit down together. But spaces on their own don't deliver innovation, agility, change in your organization. The thing that really, really makes it happen is collaboration. So an interesting environment, talented people, and 
an information structure that allows people to collaborate, but to collaborate as teams, not to collaborate as individuals. How can we as a team learn together, engage together, collaborate? The next is leadership. Leadership really, really matters. And one of the lessons that I hope you'll take away is that it's not just about the founder or the person at the top of the tree. It's about leaders at all level. A leader is somebody who owns a project, who pushes it forward. If you hear about Larry and Sergey talking about moonshot thinking, about what we're doing around the kinds of projects that we're working on, you'll hear them talking about not going for a 10% increase, like a slight reduction in some kind of cost or slight improvement. They look for 10x times thinking. And the view is this, that if you're looking at those small marginal improvements, then you're building on top of existing solutions that lots of people have spent time thinking about. And you've got lots of existing constraints. And it becomes really, really tempting just to engage the resources, just pushing small, tiny, incremental improvements. If you go for something 10x, like you know, let's make a car that can run 500 miles on a gallon, then you have to throw it all away and start from scratch and really create something new and inspiring. And that's where we come back to you know, putting a man on the moon. That was something that hadn't been done. It created great leadership, but then individuals in those teams on, working on Apollo led those individual projects. I thought I would put together a couple of rules that might help, other than just using yes and rather than no but. Now, one of the things that we've spoken about here is living in a modern workplace. An enabling workplace, I think, is the way to think about it. And uh, many of my friends that are in the facility side of, of organizations come across and they just have a look at how we work inside of Google. They take ideas away. They don't build a new Google office, but they take some of those collaborative space ideas away. They enrich their environment as much as they can within their own constraints. They enable their workers through collaborative technologies that really turbocharge that innovation process. Organizations that look to work with and hire the best and look to retain those people long term and to build those people, again, get far more out of innovation than people who are just there for 18 months. Not looking for that last couple of percentage points of polish, but looking for innovation, for new ideas, things that can move. Accepting ideas from everybody, making sure that we measure things on data rather than opinions, and working to focus on our users rather than our competition. Coming back to Larry, you know, one of the things he says is he doesn't really see much value in a zero-sum game competing directly against another competitor in the same market. We should be looking at how can we move out into things that other people aren't doing. And that's one of the things that I'd encourage you to think about in your own organizations. What things can you do where you're uniquely placed? But the biggest risk that you can take in business today is not taking risks. The science to this and the art to this is around taking the right risks, enabling your organization to fail fast and to be happy with failure when people are innovating around things. Because if you have 15, 20 projects and one good thing comes out, that's incredible. It's great. Now let's look at one of these projects inside of Google. So you may have heard of our Google X organization that focuses on these new, big, incredible goals. One of the first projects that came out of Google X was the driverless car. And at Google, we're very, very lucky. We've got incredible research institutes to work with, universities, great talent, passionate people. And also, we've got some other assets like an incredible mapping environment that we can run these cars on, et cetera, which is useful. Think about how can we set in place some projects where we manage the risk, but where we look to potentially deliver something really, really big. Since our work is focused on building driving cars that can drive anywhere by themselves, any street in California, we've driven 140,000 miles. Our cars have sensors on which they magically can see everything around them and make decisions about every aspect of driving. Incredible technology, but it has unexpected side effects. And the one that I really like most on the self-driving cars story is the story of one of the first people that rece received one of them to test. And it's Go ahead, Steve. Auto driving. Here we go. Where we go. <laughs> Look, 
Oh, no hands. <laughs> no hands anywhere. No hands, no feet. No hands, no feet, no nothing. <laughs> I love it. This is some of the best driving I've ever done. <laughs> Ninety-five percent of my vision is is gone. I'm well past legally blind. You lose your timing in life. Everything takes you much longer. There are some places that you cannot go. There are some things that you really cannot do. Where this would change my life is to give me the independence and the flexibility to go the places I both want to go and need to go when I need to do those things. Google Glass is all about a wearable mobile headset that we can interact with that physical world on. So it's no longer just, I've got a mobile phone, it can do things for me. It's, I'm interacting with the real world. And what I thought I'd do, just to welcome you to this world of glass, is I thought I'd show you one of the training videos. This is your touchpad. It runs from your temple to your ear. Tap the touchpad to wake up glass. You should see the display above your line of sight. Adjust it to see everything. The home screen shows a clock. This is your timeline. It's a row of cards. Things to the left are happening now or coming up, like the weather, an upcoming flight, or an event in your calendar. You can tap on any card to see more. The Google Explorers that I've spoken to and that I've seen have done some incredible things, and it's just been really, really incredible to see them get out there and use it in ways that we never imagined. And to come back to my earlier thoughts around you know, side effects, unintended consequences, these are just amazing, the kind of things that we've seen from explorers. I'm what you'd call a non-traditional teacher. I teach primarily online for students whose schools can't offer advanced physics courses. To be a glass explorer means I get to tie together all the things that are most engaging about learning. You know, making every moment a teachable moment. The first thing I'm planning to do with Glass is take students with me on a virtual field trip as I go to CERN in Switzerland. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Holy cow! Wow. Okay, I'm gonna try to get my brother's class in on this. Okay, Glass, hang out with Ryan's class. Wow. Wow. Hello, everybody. Hi, Drew. Welcome to CERN. We made it. We're here. This is the CMS. That's incredible. If we've inspired you in some way, if we've enabled you to think a little more around what you could do in your business, maybe what you could do with some of the big problems of the planet, or maybe just some of the issues that you see in your own industry or your own organization, then I'd encourage you to go and look at the Solve4x website, solve4x.com. Google X team have set this up. It's an independent group just focusing on and supporting innovation, new ideas, new thinking. And finally, in closing, I'd just like to say for Google Enterprise, we hope your innovation journey is really, really fruitful, that you work out incredible things that you can do, and we'd love to be with you on that journey.